Hello again, it's Lock Noob, and here we have a pretty beastly lock. This is a Chubb Conquest. There is a full enclosed shackle version of this as well, which is very cool. I don't have that. But this isn't in bad condition, all things considered. It's clear, clearly an old lock. It's um, going to be, what, 30 odd years old, I imagine. There is the key. Now, the key is extremely long, um, which means when you're picking it, everything goes into the lock much deeper than you'd expect. The other thing is, I'm not sure how you would gut this. Um, it could be a large format interchangeable core and I just don't have the uh, the control key. It doesn't have anything down here to open up. Maybe you'd have to tap something out or access a grub screw somewhere. I, I can't figure it out. So unfortunately we're not going to be able to gut this one but we will be able to pick it and that's all that matters i suspect it is a large format interchangeable core and i just don't have the control key um but again i i'm, I'm not entirely sure of that either now this would have a i think a plastic uh, weather shield on the bottom that's now gone but nevertheless this weighs uh 1.1 kilograms which is um something like i don't know two and a half pounds, something like that. It's it's surprisingly weighty, and uh, I think that's kind of cool. Let's throw some advice and see if we can pick it. I might actually try some form of hybrid picking, a bit of a bit of raking, followed by a little bit of picking going on in there as well. So yeah, let's, let's try that out. Okay, we're in the vice. Let's just check our key works nicely, and it does. Now, because this is a particularly wide keyway, I don't know whether it's where, the key doesn't look particularly, well, so it is quite a, a thick base of that key. But I'm going to use this tapered tensioning tool, tapered tensioning tool, to apply some tension. And I'm going to go in with a an abona rake, and we're just going to go straight down this really far, almost as far as we can go, to see if we can't um, give this a, a little jiggle and get ourselves into a full set. And then I'm going to try to wriggle my way out, knowing that I've sort of trapped the rake a little bit on now, now you know, some of these pins are in that false set, just trying to wriggle it out best I can without leaving that false set. There we go. And we're going to just try and rake the front of the lock now a little bit. And well, I think we'll, I think we'll take that, we'll take that, we'll take that. Okay, so I'm going to get my pick in here, and that feels like one, two, three, pin four. Here's going some counter rotation, I think. Uh, that's pin five. No, that's four. That's five. Little click, and we're just going to go through the lock, and anything. They get a little click there on pin three. We're just going to go in, and it's just trying to find anything which is binding. This is pin six, right at the back, and we just hit it, and we're open. Very strange, definitely get some counter rotation in there. It's very subtle, it's an old locks, for probably very greasy and dirty on the inside, which doesn't help. Um, but there you go, it's open. It's a shame we can't gut it. I just finished filming this video saying I couldn't get this whole thing open, and I then looked up videos on YouTube and found out it was possible. And I looked down the keyway, I still couldn't see a way to do it, and then I realized it's just full of dirt. I actually had to scrape the rust and muck off this screw head to expose it. That's why I didn't think there was a way in. It's just so old and so gross on the inside that uh, I genuinely thought that mine must have been uh, very weird indeed. So I'm just going to try and take this circlip off the back if I can. I don't have quite the right circlip tool you see so I'm hoping that this will do. Okay, so I managed to get this circlip off the back. Um, I had no idea, it's actually like a shiny silver color. I suppose that's what you get for when you have super old locks which have definitely seen a lot of use. Um, a bit grimy at the back, let's give that a bit of a clean off. Um, doesn't hurt to give it a little clean uh, to get all the grime off. Okay, so interesting, interesting. Nothing I can see out of the ordinary there. Um, Let's see if we can't get a follower and a shim maybe and a key that works and see what is inside this. Okay, so can I get a shim in there? Yes, I can, which is good. Can I get a follower in there? I think I can. Let's just do this one 
swift move. It's really nice, isn't it, when you don't think you're going to get into a lock and you can. Is it undercutting on this or is it just a very wide open sort of keyway? Um, let's see if I can get any of these pins out. Oh, these are dirty. Yes, I think, I don't think it's undercutting. There's some kind of like ledge there. Can you see? Where's my pick? Can you see it's a ledge? It is undercut. I think, or is it, or is it just a ledge? Uh, it's ever so slightly undercut, I think. Can you see that? Hmm. Not 100% convinced, but I think it is. So let's get these pins out. Uh, oh, they are. They're like tacky. They're so they're so um, greasy that they they have that kind of like old grease feel to it. This this is a lock which definitely needs a bit of TLC and love to clean up a bit. Gross, right? Um, appears to be the back, that's the front. Move that shim material out of the way. And have a look at these pins. So there's definitely, I know there's spools in here because I could feel the spools. Uh, yep, there's a spool. That's a standard. There's a spool. Another spool. Very greasy, they're sticking to the, um, and looks like a standard steel pin. They're actually sticking to the tweezers that are so greasy. This is just from um, gutting it. <laughs> okay, so um, very dirty pins, but yeah, they, they're very sharp little spools on here. So we've got some steel, we've got, uh, yeah, steel key pin, brass key pin, steel, brass, uh, brass and they are tapered if you look they, they are tapered pins and then steel again all of these key pins are tapered so they will overset um a little bit if you're not careful then we have in pin position one we have standard steel driver then spool standard steel driver spool spool standard steel driver so i think these will be like anti-drill features these uh spaced out steel pins there are, there are no balance stacks so you're not trying to compensate for the long key pins with the short driver and vice versa um i can't tell whether it's undercutting let's grab one of these spools and just see whether it does anything when it grabs there or when it comes up it does grab onto a little lip a little bit if it is undercutting it's very mild um maybe it make the spools like hang up a little bit but otherwise, it didn't seem to cause me too much of a problem. It's a very strange um, sort of edge to these pin chambers. But yeah, that's what's inside the Chubb Conquest. I'm going to give it a bit of a clean, get it back together. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Indeed. Well, I hope you liked that. If you did, leave a like. Any comments, leave them below. I do read them all and reply to as many as I can. If you haven't subscribed, now's a great time to do so to see more content like this. And of course, I will see you all next time.